There I was, sitting at my home office computer, watching the North Idaho College trustee meeting on Zoom, when all of the sudden, Todd Banducci. Before I go into the September NIC board meeting, uh, they held yet another emergency meeting back in early September. Two headlines in the Coeur d'Alene Press, NIC appeals Swain reinstatement and board policies debated. Keep this in mind throughout all of my Kootenai rants on NIC. The huge issue facing the college over accreditation is board governance. Trustee McKinsey suggested several policy changes that appeared aimed at specific board members. The big deal with McKinsey is micromanagement. He wants to control everyone. He's operating under the delusion that he runs the college, not President Swain, and a lot of McKinsey's hissy fits underscore this delusion. He wants to control things that are beyond the scope of a trustee position. So so do I have the authority to manage this program or is this gonna be managed by the board? Well, (laughs) we are expanding the budget and I would assume that individual departments would be willing to spend their portion of the budget very wisely. That's not, that doesn't answer the question. Am I managing this or is the board managing this? Sir, we're approving the budget and I would expect uh, the, you to carry out the board's will to support our student athletes at the full maximum the board is willing to support them for. Are you willing to do that? Because you said you were willing to do that if that's the board will on Monday. So I want to know if that's going to be any obstruction for coaches to get the scholarships they need for students. We care about the students. We want our athletic sports to succeed. I am am not objecting. I'm trying to get clarification. And I'm giving it to you. Are you... Are the coaches going to be able to provide the scholarships they need for students and make the decisions? So I, I just, yes, but just understand that it's a potential $2.6 million hit yes. on the budget. And we're representing the taxpayers, and we're saying that this is the priority in the budget. All those in favor of this motion passing say aye. The trustees broke the college's budget, blew through $2.6 million of your money, and quibbled with the president. See how rude McKinsey is? The word rude doesn't really describe the disrespect and disdain he holds for the college president. Ironically, two hours earlier, they quibbled over spending $300 for Dr. Swain's membership in the Rotary Club, the evil Rotary Club. But spending at least $2.6 million on athletes who don't live here is what the taxpayers want? Sometimes I think Greggy just needs a nap. It's getting late. 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 Let's pass this motion and go to bed. I say we just call the question and we go to bed. Security, it's late and we're waiting on you. The motion that I, the chair is going to make because it's late and I want to go to bed. It's late. Please go to bed. It's late. But the evening truly belonged to Todd Banducci, my favorite Neanderthal in a suit. Remember board governance? The staff assembly presented their list of issues they have with the board and with accreditation in an effort to resolve these issues. This is the proper way to govern. Evening trustees, Dr. Swain, uh, Chair McKenzie. Um, Last time we met, we said we'd bring back our um, action for the board for our our previous past um, votes of no confidence. So I'm gonna read those are pretty similar to faculties. Uh, The first one is, Commit in a clearly identified, transparent timeline and detailed action plan to addressing a NWCCU show cause sanctions in a timely manner to address NIC accreditations. Uh, Second, finish all board policy (coughs) revisions in order to clearly articulate the board's role, function, scope. Third, NIC immediately pay off Dr. Greg South's remaining contract. Reconsider a decision made at the August 23rd, 2023 Board of Trustees meeting to hire legal counsel in opposition to the recommendation the potential financial impact of negotiating a 1.3 million settlement prior to receiving the report of findings and without con- consultation with the insurance company, particularly in terms of respecting each other's statements, interrupting while others are speaking, and talking over one another and not allowing all trustees to express their thoughts. That all seems reasonable, right? How about the least reasonable member of the NIC board respond with all the smugness he can muster? Well, that was quite a load. A lot to unpack. <laughs> I'd like to try on a few. First off, once again, there's a number that's been thrown around that unfortunately one of the trustees up here voiced, but that number 
I don't know where it originated from, and it's nowhere that I'm aware of. We're going to address that a little bit further. Um, there were a couple other things that were said that were inaccurate, and we're going to address those further, too, regarding that particular topic. Now, let's talk about the lawsuit first. And he ended with this inappropriate remark. You guys keep coming at us. You're the employees. In, in the corporate world, employees give feedback when they're asked. Sometimes it's unsolicited. Sometimes there's a way to do that. But then you just keep doing your job. In the military, you have a chance for some feedback. But at a certain point, it becomes just insubordination. And that's what this has become. So, you know, do your jobs and be thankful for them. And we'll do our part and you guys do your part. And, and, and be more civil to this. My point is that, no, my point is that, security. my point, sir, is that you're not civil. Am I being uncivil? Am I using bad language? President Swain, will you please give this give man a little wine? Not on Because. What a disgrace to the uniform. Imagine being in the Air Force and having to work for this CAD. The meat of his unhinged hysterics focused on the Coeur d'Alene Press, the Save NIC organization, and myself. Let me just speed up this video to avoid feelings of nausea. Here, I'm going to talk about the press a lot today. I, I got a lot of good things for you guys. The falsehoods that you perpetuate, the... We have a lot of fiction writers, and you must have a lot of space to fill in here. Some of the people get just miles of ink. A couple of folks from this audience, I'll, I'll speak to that too. We want to get to some truth. It'd be nice if the narrative wasn't trying to be set in advance on all these topics. It's like if you shout it out there first, and if you can say it first, even if it's untrue and it's a fabrication or a falsehood, but it sticks. You know, it's been talked about how the lie goes around the world before the truth even gets off the doorstep. And, and, and there's a real battle for the narrative, and, and I'll confess, I know I'm not good at it. I've been followed, I'm stalked, I, I'm, people are watching all my, my Facebook, you take pictures of me, you, you view me, and you see all these things on me, but you never have any evidence of anything. But yet all these things seem to stick. I'll speak about some of that. It's amazing the things I've been accused of. So much I don't even understand or even know what they are. Which, which is fine, I guess, but we're going to put some of that to rest. And I know there's a response here just to generate to you guys. It's going to try to put a couple of things to rest. Because again, I've been accused of a couple of things today that are not true. From the, up there. And I know there was one coming towards me. You know, when, when somebody accuses me falsely, I began, you began, I'm soft. And in the video evidence, proves that he was the aggressor. And I'm standing with my glasses in my hand trying to calm him down. And he's telling me a friendship. And he's all the way up to his car, screaming and yelling in the church. Dropping F-bombs in front of one of the young female employees. And if somebody gives me a list of crime and crime, please, I'm going to keep the share. Todd is lying. You can check out my video to see my version of the story, which hasn't changed since Todd accosted me. Once again, Bully Todd plays the victim card, and his pathology goes well beyond that. He's the most obnoxious narcissist in local government. Here's what author Shannon L. Alder says about narcissists. You will never get the truth out of a narcissist. The closest you will ever come is a story that either makes them the victim or the hero, but never the villain. Given all the monkey poo Todd has flung my way, my wife and I took off and hurried to the NIC meeting to reassure Todd that his obnoxious lies aren't to be tolerated. We rushed in and sat down right in front of Todd. I brought up my camera to record him, and yes, he was feeling uncomfortable. The good news is that Banducci probably will not run for re-election. I've got you know, a little over a year left. Before I go out of this thing, I, I want to make sure people know what th was the truth. And that's my job, Todd, to get out the truth about you, and specifically the cancer that put you and McKinsey into office. Unqualified extremists using out-of-state dark money are working right now to destroy our valuable public institutions. Maybe some of these words are too big for you, Todd. And I know you're watching. Hello? Here's something to help you with those big, scary words. Penelope. Penelope. Calliope. Calliope. Hyperbole, hyperbole, hyperbole. One more year of this is just too much. Accreditation is on the shoulders of mental midgets who are disgraceful public servants. And the cancer that put these destructive idiots into office is working hard to do the same thing to your school districts, fire districts, and city councils in just about five short weeks. God help NIC. God help us all.